Hello there, my fellow pointy-eared tree lovers, and welcome back to another video on the mysterious wood elves. After two videos on the Norse guns, I wanted to return for a little while to the wood elves, and if nothing else, at least finish my coverage of their armies and units. And, since I usually save the best for last, today we're gonna talk about some of their creatures and beasts of war. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Great Stag Great stags are magical creatures closely connected to the most ancient of forests. It is said that when a great stag emerges from its dark arboreal shelter, great deeds are afoot. Thus, in a great many lands, the appearance of a great stag is thought to signal the onset of portentous times. This has led many an unscrupulous wizard to bind a great stag to their will, purely as a means of gathering wealth and support from their more credulous allies. That such plans inevitably backfire in a spectacularly gory fashion seems to serve as little warning to the next charlatan in line. The stag invariably chafes at servitude to an unrighteous master, and will likely trample the fool to death the moment it gets a chance. There is no mistaking a great stag for any of the lesser creatures roaming the forest of the world. It is a powerfully built animal, whose every snorting breath releases plumes of steam. The antlers of the great stag are both impressive and formidable about whose iron-hard points dances a ghostly nimbus of magic. However, what is most remarkable about the great stag is its noble presence. The creature moves on with an unsurpassed grace, for it is a king among beasts and the natural spirit of the world made manifest. The Unicorn The unicorn is an innately magical creature, but its selfish nature means it tends to feel no kinship with creatures that were summoned or created through magical means, despite their common origin. If anything, it pities such beings for their misfortune at having been created as anything other than a unicorn. Unicorn ivory is a much sought-after prize in certain corners of Bretonian society, and many a gallant knight has met his end pursuing a unicorn deep into Athelorren. Just as the brave warrior thinks he has cornered the creature, it disappears without warning, conveniently within a few paces of a host of vigilant way-watchers. Curiously enough, unicorns are drawn to female mages as moths to a flame, and find the taste of magic intoxicating. Most spell singers and grail damsels find this an acceptable situation, as a tame unicorn makes for an excellent mount. Furthermore, the beast's nature protects its rider against hostile magic, with a devastating spell often resulting in little more than a fizzle after striking a unicorn. One of the most famous of unicorns is known as Silvaron, or Silveron, the steed of the fey enchantress Morgiana. The Dryad To harm the forest is to invoke a deadly and unyielding vengeance, which ends only when the transgressor's body has been ruined and broken. Only a fool deliberately offers insult to a dryad, but, alas, these spirit maids are so utterly different to mortal creatures that offense is often taken whether it was intended or not. Dryads are able to shapeshift into different forms and often mimic the appearance of elves. On such occasions, they appear as unearthly, live, and beautiful maidens, albeit with a greenish hue to their skin and twigs in their hair. It is in this form that the dryads walk the bounds of Athelorren. They are not choosy on their victims, preying on tree killers, invaders, and lost innocents with equal malice. The only sensible course of action when approaching such a creature is to flee as far away as possible and as quickly as possible. However, most potential victims find themselves enraptured by the dryad's comely form or beguiled by the haunting melodies of their song. Before long, the victim is sufficiently adult that he will do anything that the spirit desires, and so is swiftly enticed into the shadowy depths of the forest. Only when the hapless prey is completely under the spell, his mind lost in a cloud of desire and promise, 
does the dryad actually strike? When Avaloran takes the field of battle, the dryads assume their war aspect and hunt upon the flanks of the army. Their live and swift nature allows them to cover greater distances at speed, falling with ease upon a foe who, until moments earlier, thought themselves entirely safe from harm. Indeed, a surprise attack by hissing and darting dryads is sometimes the first tangible warning an enemy army gets that Athaloran marches against them. Either that, or their general disappearing from camp in the still watches of the night, only to be found shredded and lifeless in a nearby glade at dawn the next day. Dryads are definitely not famous for their mercy. The Tree Man Tree men are massive humanoid creatures resembling upright walking trees. They are considered a legend by most old worlders, and a few that believe in their existence think them long dead. They are definitely not gone, but those remaining dwell exclusively in the forest of Athaloran. Indeed, there are those who believe that the tree men are Athaloran. They seldom venture beyond the forest for any but the direst of reasons and they are frequently accompanied by dryads when they do. They are wise entities and will not engage in battle if they cannot win, unless they have no other choice. All the creatures of Athaloran obey them without question, which grants them a great many beastly allies, to say nothing of the wood elves themselves. To stand against the wrath of a tree man is to face the fury of nature unleashed. Survivors often dread going into the woods for years afterwards, the mightiest of Athaloran spirits are able to entwine their essence with that of a living tree, molding it to their will. This is not a decision taken lightly, for when a spirit forms a bond with a living tree, they become irrevocably merged, and they cannot choose to leave. Only death can sever that connection. From that moment onwards, the will of the spirit shapes and drives the tree, using knotted bark and gnarled branches to serve where an insubstantial spirit form cannot. Thus is a tree man born. The tree men are revered by elf and forest creature alike, and they are often infested with lesser spirits living among the branches, the roots, and the hollows. For their part, the tree men cherish all the other lesser creatures, and they have a warmth of character wholly at odds with that of the dryads. These incredibly old beings have seen entire races rise and fall like the ascent and descent of the sun, and understand the passing of time in a completely unique way. Even the long-lived elves seem to pass into dust at an alarming rate to the tree men, the oldest of whom can remember times before the footsteps of the elves left a mark upon the world and can expect to remain where the elves walk no longer. A tree man can be counted among the most mighty of Athaloran denizens. Their gnarled form is almost impervious to harm, and their strength a near match for the dragons of the deep glades. The tree men do not fight with grace or finesse, but instead with huge sweeping blows that strike home with enough force to shatter a boulder. And finally for today, the tree kin. While these are similar to the tree men, they are not the same. A tree kin is a mighty brute, an animated hulk of dead wood formed into a twisted and monstrous parody of an elf. It fights with gnarled fists that batter armor apart and pummel flesh to bloody ruin. The tree kin is implacable, fearing neither death nor pain, for its body no longer has the ability to feel sensation and the spirit that drives it is already long dead. At the heart of every treekin resides the soul of a dead wood elf, though this is not the fate of all. Only the strongest and most driven of souls retain enough individuality to become such a creature. Most of them, eager to renounce the identity and struggles that shape their mortal lives, pass into the weave of the forest. Though their families and friends might occasionally fancy that they can hear a loved one's voice upon the wind, it is but an echo of a life long abandoned. However, those souls that become treken are unable to completely abandon their grip on their former lives, and they forge themselves into a new body out of dead timber so that they might continue to defend in death that which they loved in life. The treken seldom recognize those that they knew in their former lives, though. 
So much of memory is based in their physical senses, and thus lost alongside their physical form. As a result, those few flashes and fragments that remain to a Trican are more confusing than they are informative. For most of them, the world is a strange place, hidden beneath a shroud of forgotten memory. Though the creatures might be drawn to guard particular glades or safeguard certain elves, they are seldom aware of the importance of the places and the people. For example, one such creature can stand sentinel over the family halls for a thousand years, never once aware that the same catastrophe that had slain its mortal form had killed every member of its bloodkin as well. Yet, if a Shriekin's garbled memory causes the creature sadness, it never speaks of it. Indeed, it is rare enough to hear one of them speak at all. When roused to communication, the creatures do in slow, hollow tones, as if the thought driving the words comes from somewhere far away. However, they do understand instructions well enough, and are even willing to abandon their self-imposed vigil when asked, should their power be needed elsewhere. At no time is this more clear than when the wild hunt begins, and hundreds of the Trican come out of the deep wood to answer the call. Thus can the wild hunt often seem to be nothing less than a forest come to life, seething with rage and determined to reclaim the lands stolen from it in centuries past. There are few sights more glorious or more terrifying than that. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the creatures defending Athaloran and which it chose to help the Wood Elves in war for today. In case you're wondering why I didn't mention the forest dragon today, that's because I wanted to make a separate video, or set of videos, someday, focusing just on the dragons. Which one of the creatures described today did you find the most interesting? Feel free to share any thoughts, opinions, or questions you might have on them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all an awesome and peaceful day. May Isha's blessings be upon you.